one kind of music that might be promising in terms of improved sales rates might be classical music. But of course, only if it's played in the right environment. Researchers speak of the musical fit hypothesis. So you shouldn't play classical music in a shop selling football equipment. I suppose the customers might be a little bit irritated. But when you are selling wine, for example, classical music could be the music of choice because it might prime thoughts of high quality, expertise and luxury. So maybe it's no wonder that Arini and Kim found in their study the influence of background music on shopping behavior, classical versus top 40 music in a wine store. They found after they had played for the course of almost three months on Fridays and Saturdays at a time from 6 to 11 p.m. two different kinds of music. In one group people were listening top 40 pop music like Nirvana and Fleetwood Mac and in the other group participants were listening to classical music like songs from Mozart and Vivaldi. They found that in a wine cellar of a restaurant where customers could go and choose the wine they wanted to have, they found that when classical music was played, on average the patrons were paying $7.43 Whereas when top 40 music was played, the patrons were paying only $2.18. So when classical music was played, people spent three times more money. This is quite a huge effect. Nevertheless, if we take a closer look at this study, there is a problem because even though it sounds like that there must have been a lot of participants, I mean they observed for almost three months on Fridays and Saturdays, but they also write that on average in this time, every evening only 11 participants came to the wine cellar and of those only a few were really buying wine. So mm, I'd like to see a replication of this. So let's take a look at, in my opinion, one of the best studies in this field which was conducted in 2003 and published in the Journal of Environment and Behavior. The title, The Effect of Musical Style on Restaurant Customers' Spending. So this time it's not about buying wine in a wine cellar, but this time it's about the spending of customers in the restaurant. And what is really good about this study is the number of participants. They had 393 participants, which were all guests of a high quality restaurant in England who had no clue that they were participating in the study. On some evenings, the background music of this restaurant was classical music. For example, music by Vivaldi and Handel. On other evenings, the background music was pop music, like music from Britney Spears and Ricky Martin. Now you might say, <laughs> come on, with this kind of background music I would run away as well. But, well, the study was conducted in 2003 and at this time this music was in, at least for a big part of the population. The third condition was the no music condition. So in this condition, no background music was playing. The results, again, speak for the effects of classical music because on average, people in the classical music condition spend more money. More money than the people in the pop music condition and in the no music condition. There was no significant difference between the pop music condition and the no music condition. And what is particularly nice about this study is that they differentiated bit between the different parts of the meals. So they could report which parts of the meal were influenced by the 
different kinds of music. And they found that people were spending more when they were listening to classical music, especially on starters and on coffee. So this study, even though it's not about wine consumption, can be regarded as a replication of the study of Arini and Kim. And it tells us in the right environment, classical music might increase sales rates. We finish this episode with a, from a methodological point of view, not so well done study, but it's a funny study. So let's regard it as a pilot study. And I think the results are quite interesting. It's a study by Celine Jacob, published in 2006 in the International Journal of Hospitality Management. The title styles of background music and consumption in a bar an empirical evaluation so this time the location is not a high quality restaurant but it's a small bar in france the participants were only and this is the weakness of the study only 93 patrons during 14 afternoons from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., so quite early in the day, um, different kinds of music were played. On some afternoons, cartoon music was played, so probably Bugs Bunny theme songs. They don't describe which kind of music, so I just have to hypothesize. Um, on other afternoons, top 40 music was played, And on some afternoons, drinking songs were played. And what do you think? Which kind of songs might increase sales rates in this environment? Well, maybe you might guess, because I said the study is funny, maybe you might guess the cartoon songs. But no, the cartoon songs had no impact, at least in comparison to the top 40 songs. The best music in terms of sales rates were drinking songs. When drinking songs were played, patrons on average paid five euros, whereas when uh, cartoon music or top 40 music was played, patrons paid only a little bit more than three euros. And in respect to the musical fit hypothesis, the results really make sense because many people associate drinking songs with joyfulness and alcohol consumption. So if you're running a bar, better don't play cartoon music or top 40 music. And unless your patrons are really high society, I also wouldn't recommend classical music. Instead, drinking songs might actually work even though because of the small number of participants, the results should be regarded as preliminary. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And maybe next time when you enter a shop, restaurant or bar, better listen carefully what kind of music they are playing in the background.